Hello guys, Francis here, back with a brand new video for the Chip Chat series. And in today's video we're gonna talk about the MM74 H3032IC. This is a very easy to use, beginner friendly IC. And if you wanna learn how to operate it, you came to the right place. So let's get started. Today's chip chat was brought to you by Francis Studios Group. So first let's talk about what is this IC. There's a good chance if you found this video that you know what an OR gate is. This is a quad OR gate chip and uh, let's look at the datasheet. Yeah, so you can see that this chip has been around for a while, 1987. It's uh, quite a long uh, life for this and uh, still in production. Yeah, you can read the data here, but you can see the architecture is very, very simple. Nothing magical going on. It's four OR gates uh, around and you can see if one or two uh, is pulled up to high, then the output, the number three, is enabled. And uh, just as the same with uh, four and five, and all around the whole IC. When one of the input pins is enabled, the game is on. Yeah, and you have the usual VCC and ground, you hook it up to 5 volts or something. Yeah, there is a logic diagram if you're interested. And this chip can operate from 0 0.0.5 negative to plus 7 volts. Uh, yeah, and uh, lots of other uh, data. Yeah, if you're interested, you can read all of this. It's available in uh, SMD and uh, DIP uh, THT package. Uh, yeah, it's a very simple data sheet. You can play with it as much as you want, but uh, no need for that because it's so simple. It's just four OR gates, and if you don't know how an OR gate works, let me show it to you, just very simple. Everybody knows this, but if some of you haven't played with computer logic, an OR gate is represented with this symbol. It has two inputs and one output, and either one of the inputs is a high, a one, a true, then the output will be activated. And whenever both is low, then the output will be low as well. It is so very simple that I don't want to talk about it anymore. Instead of that, I built you this demo circuit where we can see how this works. So let's put it down and yeah, I put this uh, bypass cap. I always suggest you to put before the chip. There is the IC and the uh, LED with a one kilo ohm resistor. In front of it that goes to pin three of the output pins. Yes, I put this gray wire to ground and we have this yellow and brown wire to ground as well, which yeah, you can see if I pull it out, uh, one of the pins will be enabled. So you can see this is the two input pins for the OR gate and whenever I pull one out, so I pull it up to high and the other one is at low, then the LED will flash, affected by the noise. Uh, yeah, this is all a uh, very simple circuit. Yeah, one of the OR gates lag is up to high now, both of them, so the LED is on, and if I plug back to the negative rail, uh, then it's off. It's very simple. Nothing magical. So let's get back to the CAD. I selected this uh, beautiful capacitor that we'll put in here. Uh, this will be an electrolytic capacitor for 33 microfarads. I just eyeballed it so it doesn't have to be very punctual. You can use one microfarad, ten microfarad, whatever you have at home. I have this 33, so I will go with this. And uh, yeah, it's the bypass cap for stabilizing the IC whenever it switches too much and uh, draws more power than it needs to. And this uh, ballast capacitor will keep the power for it. So yes, I connect up the power leads to the cap first. And then I put two simple uh, pins for VCC and ground. I can copy this one down here. This will be VCC and ground input power. 
We know that this chip can deal with a wide range of voltages from minus half to 7 volts or something. Yeah, you remember the uh, data sheet. And I connect up the power leads to the uh, input pins so it can be powered. And yeah, now it's all done, it's powered, we can use any of the uh, OR gates now. But uh, I will select to, from 1 to 3. Uh, this is the one that I used on my real life example, so I will be consistent. But you can use each of them, or any of them. They are independent from each other, so you can use them in any, any variation you like. So, very simple. And here I'm going to add two pins for the input, uh, for the OR gate. I'm only going to set up one OR gate for simplicity's sake, but you can do four of them if you'd like, so no problems there. Here we go, I added input A to pin number one, and input B to pin number uh, two. Right, and so Either if input A or input B is not low, then the output will be enabled where I put this uh, LED diode and um, we're gonna find a resistor. Uh, uh, let me... Oh, this will be good. Yeah, this will be a 1 kilo ohm resistor that will pull down the LED cathode side to uh, the ground rail. Uh, let me um, take these and 1 kilo ohm. I should be all right, and uh, let's connect up everything after I align this. So this is to the cathode of the LED, and the anode is uh, already connected to the output pin of the uh, OR gate to pin 3, and this down to the rail. Right, and this is all, all of it. It's very simple circuit. You can do all four, as I've said. I just did one for simplicity's sake, but it's all right, very simple. So you can see how easy it is. It's a very simple IC, but very powerful, because you can build a lot of logic circuits with it. Like anything that you can imagine in your head, you can build from OR, AND, XOR, NOR gates. Uh, this was the OR gate chip. And in future episodes, we can take a look at other uh, logic gates. But that's it for today. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe so you can support my channel and my endeavors. And please share it with your friends if they are interested in electronics or computers. As always, have a very wonderful day. Francis signs off.